Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be talking about all things mechanical engineering. I'm going to break down what the field is, some of its history and definitions. Then I'll look into the things you might learn if you decide to take mechanical engineering as your engineering degree. After that, I'll be talking about what you can expect your starting salary to be and what companies you could work for. And finally, I'll talk about a master's in mechanical engineering, if it's worth it, and how it differs from an undergrad. If you're looking forward to learning a lot about mechanical engineering today, then leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and let's get it started. So what is mechanical engineering? Well, according to the Wikipedia page, mechanical engineering combines engineering physics, mathematics, and material science to design, analyze, manufacture, and maintain mechanical systems. And it's one of the oldest and broadest branches of engineering. Just like mechanical engineering itself, this definition is pretty broad and it doesn't really tell you all that much. And a main reason for this is that a mechanical system is pretty much anything that moves. Some examples might be gears, chains, belts, bearings, fluid, heat, and even air. Pretty much everything moves in some way and mechanical engineers will either design things to make it move or harness the energy of things that already move. There are tons of roles involving mechanical engineers, whether it's manufacturing a raw metal into an actual product or designing a business-to-business -business product or solution that can be used on the assembly line. And lastly, designing products that can be used by consumers in their day-to-day -day lives. So because of all of this variety, getting a degree in mechanical engineering doesn't necessarily give you a direct path into any one career. But you can also say this for pretty much any kind of engineering, because regardless of what type of engineering you take, you will learn a lot about lots of different types of engineering. If you do end up deciding to get a mechanical engineering degree, you could end up working on some cool things like a spaceship or a Mars rover. And you can also work on some other basic things like a bicycle or a sprinkler. But a lot of the skills in order to work as a mechanical engineer are very similar. For example, mechanical engineers generally understand the design process very well. They understand part manufacturing, taking things from an idea to a sketch to a 3D model to a prototype. They understand how different materials might be better suited for different situations. And they are well versed in many kinds of physics, whether it's thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, combustion, measurement, hydraulics, control engineering, mechanics, or dynamics. They know a lot of physics, and all of those fields I just mentioned, I didn't randomly pick out. These actually happen to be a majority of the physics courses that you will be taking if you choose to do a mechanical engineering degree. Since not everyone knows what these physics terms mean, I'm going to throw up a translation into layman terms so that you can kind of get a general idea of what each branch of physics deals with. On top of all of these physics basics, you will also be learning basics from other fields of engineering like civil, chemical, and electrical engineering. All of these courses are generally just to make sure that you can understand what the other engineers around you might be doing. So once all of your basic physics courses and other engineering basics are out of the way, you can take some upper year courses which will be more specialized into a field or career that you're interested in. This can be in things like control systems, robotics, logistics, automotive engineering, biomechanics, vibration, optics, and even more. Usually you would pick the types of courses that line up with the career or the master's degree that you would like to pursue. Generally speaking, these types of courses are probably going to be the ones that are the most relevant and most useful to you in your job in the first two to three years, you would just be kind of picking up the basics. So while we're on the topic of jobs, what can you do once you graduate with your mechanical engineering degree? What's your starting salary gonna look like? And what are some companies that you can work for? According to Glassdoor, the national average for an entry-level mechanical engineer is $67,000 in the United States. This value, depending on your source, can vary from between 60 to about 80 or $90,000 as a starting salary. This is above the average American income and you have lots of room to grow because that's just your salary in the first year. One of the reasons why this salary might not be as crazy as something like software engineering where they make upwards of $100,000 as a starting salary is because you probably won't get the same stock options. Mechanical engineers generally don't live in high cost of living cities like software engineers do. Generally speaking, a mechanical engineer would work in a large factory and in order to have the land for a large factory, it needs to be somewhat affordable so you usually won't see them in the middle of a city. 
So now let's name drop some of the most popular companies that hire mechanical engineers. If you're competitive enough, you might one day actually work for one of these companies, but you're gonna have to really work your butt off. The first one, we have NASA, every mechanical engineer's dream. And you can also become Mark Rober, the famous mechanical engineer YouTuber. Similarly to NASA, we also have SpaceX and Boeing who hire mechanical engineers. After that, we have Lockheed Martin, which manufactures equipment for the US military. You can also work at a big tech company like Google, Apple, and Microsoft because they often require hardware designers and different types of things to cool their server rooms, which the mechanical engineers can usually be responsible for. You will also often see mechanical engineers in product design, so they might be designing the shape and the casing for something like an iPhone or a Google Pixel. After this, we have car manufacturers, so companies like Tesla and Ford are really heavy on the mechanical engineering side and often hire hundreds if not thousands of mechanical engineers to run their factories and design their products. And lastly, some other cool ones that you might not have thought of are companies like Johnson & Johnson as well as Disney. And the main use for mechanical engineers from Disney would be for their amusement parks. At all of these jobs, you would probably be assigned with doing one of the following tasks as I've mentioned throughout the video. First up, we have design engineering, which is used to design pretty much anything you can think of from planes to amusement parks to consumer products. You might also be responsible for testing various manufacturing processes to make sure that the things you're manufacturing are within the product specifications. And if your assembly line happens to fall apart, you will usually be tasked with repairing it or finding someone to repair it for you. Lastly, whatever your other field of interest might be, say for example it's robotics, then naturally you would be working a little more with electronic circuits and robotics and prototyping. In all of the above scenarios, you will likely be working on a team of other engineers, which is why it's useful to know a little bit about their disciplines so that you kind of have a background when they come to you and ask you something that you might not know otherwise. So let's say that you're either happy in your mechanical engineering job and you're thinking of doing a master's, or you just want to switch careers and are looking to do a master's in mechanical engineering. Is it worth it? And what would you learn in the degree? One easy way to calculate if it's going to be worth it is to take the cost of your lost salaries for going to school for two years for a master's, plus the actual cost of tuition to attend the degree. Usually you don't want it to take more than 10 years to pay off the debts that you incur while going to school. This obviously isn't the only way to calculate it. You could also do your master's degree part-time while still working, and that would actually help you a lot in upping your skills while also not missing out on a salary. So let's say you've decided that financially it makes sense. What are you actually going to learn in a master's of mechanical engineering? The answer is, it depends. Usually when you take a master's degree, the goal is to specialize in something that's more niche and specific than your undergraduate degree. So in line with this, most mechanical engineering master's degrees are actually focused on specific fields. So for example, you could take a master's in automation and robotics, master's in control systems, master's in manufacturing, master's in thermodynamics, fluids, and energy systems, and a master's in nuclear energy. All of these would be under the umbrella of the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, and they would be more specific and more of a direct path into the career that you're interested in. On top of this, it would make you a lot more competitive when you're trying to get a job in the specific field that you chose because everybody else around you probably only has an undergraduate degree. So that's definitely something to think about when you're evaluating if it's worth it and if you want to go into your master's. So that about wraps up everything you need to know about mechanical engineering. It's a very broad and general engineering field. You can do lots of different things with a degree in mechanical engineering. So if you're undecided, this might be the degree for you. Generally speaking, mechanical engineers are well-respected and very good at what they do when it comes to designing and manufacturing products. Let me know if you found this video useful by leaving a comment down below. Also, feel free to share it with someone who you think might also need this information. And if you like the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel for similar content like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.